Hi, I'm Nick from Jordan Bikes and I'm here today in our dyno uh, just to put a video together to explain a bit more about ECU remapping because that's what we're doing the most of at the moment. So the dyno itself uh, doesn't make changes to the bike, we make the changes, the dyno provides us with information, it tells us how a bike is fueling and also the power output at the rear wheel with this big roller drum at the back there. So I'm going to explain what we do for the ECU remapping, every bike is different but there's some things that we, we do on most of the bikes so I'll do my best to give you an explanation of what you get for your money if you book your bike in for an ECU remap and why you might even want it doing in the first place. So to start from the beginning the way an engine works is fuel goes in, air goes in, spark plug explodes, makes your piston move, that makes your engine uh, put power out basically for the simplest version of it. Uh, the bigger the explosion the more power you put out, smaller the explosion less power. So one thing that makes for a good explosion is a good air to fuel ratio. So if you hear of an AFR run, that's an air fuel ratio run, and it basically tells us how the bike is fueling. Is it too lean, as in too much air, or too rich, which is too much fuel? So every bike's different, but let's just say for the sake of argument that your, your perfect air fuel ratio is 13.5 parts of air to one part of fuel, because that's pretty much average for a lot of bikes. So if you put a race exhaust on your bike or a race air filter, you're going to make the bike leaner, which basically is putting more air through than the fuel. So it might make it 14 or 15 or even 16 uh, to one air fuel ratio. So that's making it too lean, which is going to lose your power. So with the dyno and plug it into your ECU, we can basically ECU remap it and bring your air fuel ratio back down to the perfect amount for your particular bike. So if you see me looking down over there, it's not because I've got a tick, it's because my notes are there, so just forgive me. Right, um, okay, ECU remapping in general. Why would you want to do it? Uh, basically because bikes come out of the factory massively restricted. So let's say you've got a brand new GSX-R1000. Uh, when it came out of the uh, design studio at Suzuki's factory, it was about 200 brake horsepower. Uh, but they can't sell it like that, they're not allowed because it wouldn't pass the Euro 4 regulations. So it then goes into the homologation department and the department that has to restrict it so it can be saleable. They put this massive catalytic converter onto it which completely strangles it. They also restrict it in the first four gears um, and then it comes out maybe about 175, 185 horsepower at the back wheel. So as much as a manufacturer wants to have that magic 200 brake horsepower figure for a 1000cc bike, it's really difficult to get while you're trying to get it to, to be suitable for Euro 4 regulations. So the fact is most bikes nowadays come out just very, very restricted. Uh, now in this country, there's no actual emissions test on the uh, MOT. So for us, it's fantastic news because we can get rid of the catalytic converter, we can de-restrict it, we can get rid of the pair valve, which I'll come into a bit more detail later on. But it basically means that we can make your bike run as the manufacturer intended because when it leaves that uh, that showroom that you buy it from, I promise you, it doesn't run as the manufacturer wants. It runs as EU regulations say it must run. And in most cases, it means they've got either a snatch of throttle or they're just restricted and they're just not running perfectly. So for your ECU remap, for the money you pay, we can do two things. We can do either a base map or a full custom map. Now a base map is where we basically make a lot of changes inside your ECU, but we don't do it to perfection we basically do it as good as we can using figures we've already got from Woolwich Racing which is a company in Australia and they've already had a bike like yours on their dyno and they know roughly what settings it will run better at than the factory so I'll tell you the things that we make changes to go back to my notes so every bike's different some bikes we do some things to some bikes we do other things to but I'll give you sort of some generic things we do so a lot of bikes are restricted in the first four gears. You only actually get the full power in gears five and six, and that's basically because in the first four gears, they don't trust you. They don't want you to have the full power in case you end up flipping it or whatever. They don't trust you, so they restrict the first four gears. We can de-restrict those first four gears, and we can take the top speed limiter off as well. So um, we also map your secondary throttle plates. Uh, a lot of bikes are restricted on the throttle again so that uh, they are suitable for Euro 4 emissions so that no matter how much you rev the fuel that goes through is restricted so we can de-restrict that so it's basically running as it should do. Um, a pair valve, a pair valve is basically designed 
there's a bit more to it, but I'll simplify it. As you have your dirty air coming out of the exhaust and trying to get out of the back, a pair valve is something which recirculates that dirty air. So it puts the air back, it basically sucks it from your exhaust and puts it back into your air box so that your engine has to burn it twice. Well, one fact that we all know is that hot, dirty air does not burn very well at all. Cold, uh, clean air does. So what we can do is disable your pair valve so that the dirty air basically gets straight out of your exhaust and there's only clean, cool air coming through your air box. So we disable the pair valve. We can also disable your uh, deceleration fuel cut. And in simple terms, what that means is when you go into a corner and you close your throttle, that basically shuts off your fuel so that when you're coming back out of the corner and you put your throttle back on again, it takes only a fraction of a second, but there's a little bit of lag, it's like turbo lag, until your fuel goes back through and you get going again. And what we can do is we can make it so that rather than your injectors closing fully, when you roll off your throttle, they might stay open 10 or 20%, depending on what bike, so that there's still a tiny little bit of fuel going through, so that when you do open your throttle, you've already got ignition there, and the pull out of a corner is, is just tremendous. Compared to standard, you'll feel the difference. It's so much nicer, so we can do that as well. Uh, what else do we do? We turn off your lambda sensor, top speed limiters I mentioned, um, and that's it really. We make a few other bits and bobs of changes, but that's a base map. So we make changes to your bike so that it basically runs a lot more de-restricted. So if you want a full custom map, which is the next stage up, we do all that, but we also put the bike on the dyno and do a full custom fuel map and a full custom ignition map. Because it's one thing trying to get a, a perfect burn, this 13.5 to one um, at constant throttle, but it's our job to basically make sure that no matter how wide open your throttle is and no matter what gear you're in, and no matter whether it's a hot or a cold day, your bike's fueling perfectly and having the perfect fuel ratio. But that takes time. It takes us a few hours on the dyno, but if you've got an aftermarket exhaust particularly, or an aftermarket air filter, we need to do the full custom map to get that perfect fuel in, because the base map just can't achieve the same figures. So most people's first question is, how much extra power do I get? We don't quote you, and the reason we don't quote you, because every single bike's the same. You could line up 10 bikes out of the factory not one of them would give you the same figure. Uh, they're built to different tolerances, they're not sort of a blueprinted engine perfection, plus on a cold day there's more oxygen content in the air so you get more power than on a hot day. So we won't quote your figures in advance. Uh, I can tell you we've got a load of videos on YouTube though so if you're wondering if we've done a bike like yours before we probably have. We can't do every single model so on the website we've got a list of all the bikes that we can remap the ECU of. We can do most of them but not every single one. Uh, but it's not just about brake cost power, it's about uh, mid-range, it's about torque, it's about rideability uh, and things like how it pulls out of the corner like I've explained. So bikes we're doing loads of remapping on are, what was that? What was that noise? Bikes we're doing loads of ECU remapping on are MT10s and R1s, GSX-S1000s. The main complaint on those isn't lack of power, it's a snatchy throttle basically. You're trying to roll on slowly and the throttle kicks in it's like having a light switch on and off and that's to do with the throttle map so we can map it so it basically fuels beautifully smoothly and that's what we're getting for a lot of people if you've got a latest zx10 that's got an auto so it's got a quick shifter we can enable the auto blipper as well so that you've got quick shifter going down the box as well as up the box that we're doing a lot of those uh, we're doing loads of panigales for whatever reason known only to ducati when they're coming out of the factory they are running really rough so we're doing loads of Panigales and check out the YouTube videos. I won't make promises on yours, but in a lot of cases we're getting 20 horsepower extra, even on completely standard bikes. So uh, it's worth doing if you've got a Panigale, that's for sure. Um, I think that's about it. Any more questions, by all means, give us a call anyway. Um, and that's it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and you've learned a little bit. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.